This is a wheel with some spokes. It has a, a large ring, the outer ring, uh, looks like it's 100 pounds, and one small inner ring, that's this part right here, and that's uh, 15 pounds, and it has eight spokes. Each of them are uh, 20 pounds. Let's count them up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spokes. I'm sorry? Yeah, where they're going to be slender, right, approximated as slender rods, right. Calculate the mass moment of inertia of this wheel. It's a two-dimensional problem, planar, and uh, about the axis perpendicular to the page and passing through the point A. Oh, boy, way down here. Actually, I think this is the wrong answer. I'm just thinking about it. I think I did it about point O. I think this is the answer about point O. How do you get it about point O? And then if you needed it at point A after you got it about point O, then you could use the parallel axis theorem because point O definitely is the center of mass of the entire system, of the entire wheel. Okay. Well, how would you calculate it for about point O? Wouldn't it be, what is that ring, the inner ring, inner ring? That would be I sub G. And so... If I have a ring, it's at constant radius of one foot. Isn't that just then the, the distance squared, one foot squared, times the mass of the ring, 15 pounds? So I'm going to put the units up here. It'll be pound mass, if you like, put a LBM, times foot squared. And so this will come in right here for the inner ring of 15 Let's do each spoke. Well, let's do it about the center of the spoke. And that formula we used before, isn't it 112? The mass of the spoke, which is uh, 20 pounds, times the length of the spoke squared. What is the length of the spoke from the data given? Three. Three squared. Okay. Okay, it's 15. There you go. No. Now the ring, the outer ring, is the distance of four foot squared times that mass of that large outer ring, which is 100 pounds. And so that gives me 1,600. Okay. If you wanted to calculate it at O, I used the parallel axis theorem, I sub G plus d squared m. But guess what d is for the inner ring? Zero. What is d for the outer ring? Zero because they're, 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 their center of mass is at the, at the point O. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to do is I should multiply this by the number of rings. We multiply by eight, right, because there's eight spokes. And each of them, if you shift from G into O, how far do you have to move it? What is D for the shift from the center of mass of each of those spokes? So where is the center of mass? Just think about it. It's 1.5 away from the inner ring, and the inner ring is 1, so it's 2.5. So it's 2.5. So you pick up that it's... Um, I sub G, which is 8 times 15, 120 plus, you have 2.5 squared times 8 times the, the, the weight of each spoke or the mass of each spoke, 8 times 20, 160. And this comes in, yeah, 1120. So you have 15 plus 1120 plus 1600. You add it up, and that gives me I about 0.0, which is 2,735 units of pound mass foot squared. Now, somebody says, I really want it at A. This is the answer for I at O. But if you did want it at A, you would use the parallel axis theorem again because 0.0 is the center of mass of my whole wheel, isn't it? And so then it would be uh, 2735 plus, 
How far are you going to shift it? Four meters, or not meters, four foot squared. And then what's the total mass of my system? I should have added that up. I should have done that before. The total mass is 100 plus 15 plus 8 times 20. How much? 375? Oh, 275. You are very good. And no calculator, right? There you go. That's pretty good. And so it's 4 squared times 275. Add that to 2735. And we get that it's 7,135 pound mass foot squared. That's the mass moment of inertia about the point A. There it is about the point O. Well, thank you for your attention.